Today I'm going to show you how to make an easy beginner woodworking project that takes this to this. We've got this cabinet that's kind of a mess and everything's sort of crammed in together. We've got spices next to medicine and it takes a while to find anything. So my wife asked me to make some extra shelves that line the outside of the cabinet to set spices and do some other organization. I'm going to move the two existing cabinet shelves to the top. I'm going to build two shelves that go in the middle and sit on shelf pins. And then I'm going to build a shelf that's more like a stand with feet to fit on the bottom. I'm building this entire project with one power tool, the jigsaw. If you don't know how to use a jigsaw, I've got a video that'll teach you everything you need to know. Click up in the corner and go watch that first. There are a few other accessories you're gonna to need to build this project, the first of which are clamps. You need one that's at least 18 inches like this one, and that refers to the clamping capacity between here. The second one doesn't need to be quite that long, just at least six inches. It can be a quick trigger like this or an F-style like this. And then of course, if you wanna buy some more clamps and speed things up, you can clamp up all of your shelves at the same time. You'll also need some wood glue, safety glasses of course depending on whether you're going to paint or stain you'll also need those supplies a tape measure and a pencil you'll need a speed square because not only are we going to draw 90 degree lines but we're also going to use this to guide our jigsaw and then I've got these shelf pins from my top two shelves we're also going to keep the lumber selection really easy and straightforward I've got two six foot one by threes and I just went through the bin and picked the best pieces I could find and then for the bottom shelf's legs I've got a half inch by four piece of really nice pine this is a four foot section and was actually cheaper than buying a longer piece of the construction grade lumber. A lot of times when you buy a board like this from a large home center, the edge will be really rough. You see there's a lot of tear out here and we want to get rid of that before we start. So I'm going to take the speed square and to keep it steady and in place, I'm going to clamp it. I'm giving myself Enough room so that the shoe of the speed square registers nice and firm on the workpiece, but I'm also trying to save as much as I can. And we'll tighten that down so the speed square is not moving, and then we'll make a cut. If you're using my plans, there's a link down in the description to download those. We're going to make these shelf sides 10 and 7 eighths. So we'll take the speed square, we'll extend this line all the way across. Since we're keeping this part, we want to make sure that we only cut on this side of the line. So I get that lined up, hold the speed square in place, and then we're going to clamp this down. And then for the legs for our bottom shelf, which is actually a stand, we need one of them at 10 and 7 eighths and one of them at 9 inches. I'm putting my pencil right on the line and then moving the speed square up to it. Now what this does is allow for the thickness of the pencil since it's not a straight point. If I lined up the speed square and then tried to put the pencil here, my line wouldn't be right on my measurement. So this way we get more accurate cuts. The back pieces that join the two shelf sides together are 11 and 3 quarters. Now that we've got all of our pieces cut out, we need to round off the inside edge of each shelf. So I'm going to pick the side that I like the best. Both of those are pretty good, but I see this divot right here that I'm going to keep on the bottom. So I'm going to use this as the top. So I want to cut out this corner here. Now because of the blade I have in the jigsaw and the way it cuts, the bottom of my cut is going to be the nicest. So if I want this to be the top, I need to flip this over and cut out this side. What I'm going to do is measure halfway across here, an inch and a quarter, and just make a mark. And those are going to be guides. I'm using my glue bottle to trace this. Use whatever you can that's round. And I'm just going to go from mark to mark. And we're ready to cut. Keep in mind that you've got shelves on each side and they've got opposite cutouts. And then if you've got a short piece, it's got to have the cutout in a certain spot. It's not a big deal if you mess up just to flip it over and use it on the other side. But if you've chosen the face you like, it's going to mess that up. And when I cut this, I'm going to do a combination of turning the jigsaw and rotating the workpiece to get around this curve. Thank you. 
I'm using a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna smooth out this rounded part and work on these transitions where the blade started. And then also where we cut this off with the jigsaw, I'm gonna round over all of these edges and soften them up. And then if you see the way the grain is running from left to right here, I wanna always sand with the grain, so side to side. So I'm just gonna sand a little bit on these faces and edges. And I'm painting this, so I'm not really worried about getting every bit of pencil mark off, but if you're staining, you're gonna to wanna to get all of that off and sand this down really nice. For this glue up, you wanna find the flattest work surface that you have. I'm gonna put glue in both of these joints and then we're gonna clamp it together with the 18 inch clamp. If you slide it back and forth just a little bit, it won't be so slippery here at first. As you're clamping this, you wanna make sure that these joints here are all flush, straight across, and then don't tighten this too tight. Make sure the feet are even. I'm gonna push it flat down on the work surface and then begin to slowly tighten it. It doesn't need a lot of pressure, just enough to keep the joints together. And then if you see glue squeeze out like that, you know you've done a good job. Check for flush. And we'll clean off the glue. Flip it back over, make sure it's still flat, and we'll let it sit. I've let this sit and dry in a clamp for about an hour, hour and a half, and that's the minimum amount of time that I would leave it. If you can, just go ahead and leave it in the clamp overnight, and that way it'll make sure the glue sets up and fully cures. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on the right side here. This is my short piece, so that goes on my right. So I wanna glue this foot to the bottom of this side. When I clamp this up, I wanna make sure that my clamp is straight up and down and not leaning that way or this way. If it is, then I'm gonna pull the piece one way or the other. I don't want these clamps to be too tight. I just want it tight enough to keep these two pieces pressed against each other. In about another hour, we'll be ready to glue up the other side. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna sand these joints to make sure I get all the dried glue off. And I'm sanding with the grain. I don't wanna come across here or across here. I'm also gonna look for any edges that haven't been rounded over yet, and I'm gonna gently sand those. And if you're staining this, make sure you get all the pencil marks, all the dried glue off, Anything you leave is gonna show through that stain. Since I'm painting mine, it's not as big of a deal. I just wanna make sure there's no globs of glue sticking up. Here's an important tip when you go to finish any project, whether you're painting, staining, putting on a top coat. Throughout the year, wood takes on moisture and releases moisture. So if I just paint the top of the shelf, throughout the year it's gonna release and take on moisture through the bottom much quicker than the top since the top is sealed up. So when it goes to release moisture, it's gonna dry out much quicker than the top and it's gonna cup because the bottom is gonna shrink faster than the top. There were a couple of changes I had to make along the way and I've updated the plans if you use those. Just make sure that when you go to measure that you account for everything that's gonna get in your way. There's actually a cleat at the bottom here that's used to attach the cabinet to the wall and I had to take about three quarters of an inch off each foot on the stand. Also remember if you use shelf pins, they're gonna take the width down about a quarter of an inch. But again, if you use my plans, all the dimensions are correct, the shelves will fit in there nice, and if you've got a cabinet like this one, they'll work great. 
Otherwise, just take really good measurements and fit the plans to your cabinet. If you're just getting started in woodworking and you're gonna build this project, let me know down in the comments. Also in the description, there's a link to the free plans for this project and another download you might find helpful. If you wanna see more videos like these, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.